we've got loads and loads of different types of plants growing all in the same area. And that's not always ideal, at least not long term, because some plants don't like to grow next to others for various reasons. So just having a little bit of knowledge about what they call companion planting is going to be really beneficial because we're getting to that point now where we're starting to think about putting things in the final places outside. So you're going to have mixtures of plants in your greenhouses and the same outside in your raised beds. But you need to make sure you do not put certain plants together that might have an adverse effect on each other. But at the same time, there are certain plants that thrive when they're planted close together because one benefits the other in one way or another. So before you go out there and put all your plants in that final growing space, make sure you're not putting two together that aren't really compatible. And what we'll do is we'll go through a few things. There's lots and lots of different vegetables out there and there's lots and lots of variations of companion planting as well. But if we go through some of the more common plants that the majority of people grow through season, then that's gonna gear a bit of an head start before we make any mistakes. And companion planting offers quite a few benefits to your garden. For one thing, it helps with pest control. In certain situations, there's an exchange of nutrients which benefits one plant or the other. Some plants are beneficial to create wind barriers. Some plants are beneficial for pollination. Some provide shade or support, while others create a weed suppressant or even lead to better yields when it comes to harvest. So there's lots of factors involved in companion planting that are going to help you grow better plants this year. We know for a fact that we all have real problems every single year when it comes to brassicas. Things like your cabbages, cauliflowers, brussels, kale, all part of the same family and all susceptible to a continuous onslaught of one particular pest and that's cabbage white. We all know about cabbage white butterflies and we know how devastating they can be to your crops once they get on them. And that's why we create these oop tunnels and put nets over. But sometimes the odd one might just get in there. Or you may not have oop tunnels at all, so you're basically open to attack. But there is a couple of things that you can do, apart from oop tunnels or nets, to help you with your brassicas through season. And one of them is to plant mint in between your plants. Because that smell deters a lot of pests. But just make sure that if you do that, use pots of mint. Don't plant mint into your garden in between your plants because by next year, that entire area of that garden will just be mint and you'll never get rid of it. But if you've got some small pots that you can put some mint into, put them in between your brassicas and that's gonna help a lot. Also, if you like celery, then plant some celery in between those as well because celery deters cabbage white butterfly, which is a massive bonus to us. We all love to successfully grow carrots, but quite often we don't because they get battered by a carrot root fly. And carrots take such a long time to grow and it can be very disappointing because it's not until you actually pull that carrot out of the ground that you know what's under or what damage it may have sustained through season by which time it's too late. So it's really important to set up defences for your carrots. And one way you can do that is by interplanting onions. And these two particular vegetables benefit each other because the onions will deter carrot root fly. They disguise the smell of the carrots. So that's going to help with that problem. But at the same time, the scent that the carrot gives off deters onion fly. So these two will both work perfectly well together to help you get a better harvest of those. So maybe give that a go. Also if you interplant radish, radish is a very shallow growing plant but it also churns up that soil as it grows which is going to loosen it which is just the kind of soil that you want for your carrots. So you could plant radish amongst that as well. And that carpet 
of radish leaves is also going to act as a weed suppressant at the same time. But if you're going to plant things like that, make sure you avoid planting parsnips alongside carrots because they suffer from the same diseases and they attract the same pests. So by having rows of carrots and rows of parsnips in the same area, you're then doubling the chances of attracting those pests that you're trying to avoid in first place. Tomatoes is something that we grow every single year. I've never heard of a gardener that doesn't grow tomatoes because they're easy to grow, but they do come with problems if you're not careful. But if you like basil, plant some basil along the bottom of your tomatoes. And you do that for two reasons, because basil gives off a strong smell, which certain insects don't like. But at the same time, planting basil near your tomatoes actually improves the flavour of your tomatoes. Also, once again, if you put little pots of mint or thyme at the base of those plants, that's going to deter aphids which again are right up there with cabbage white as far as gardening pests go. You could also have some marigolds in that same area because once again marigolds deter certain pests. They also deter rabbits that might want to munch on some lower level plants that you've got like lettuces. So it's always good to have a few marigolds around because they're very drought tolerant as well so they'll do perfectly well in your greenhouses. And at the same time, marigolds will attract slugs. So if you've got things like lettuces and radish in that same sort of area, slugs will go to the marigolds first and save you a lot of leaf damage. At the same time, while you're growing tomatoes, you need to avoid growing them with the members of the same family, which is called nightshade family. So don't grow tomatoes near peppers or potatoes because they suffer from the same diseases. They also absorb the same nutrients. So one plant is a massive deficit to the other. So keep your tomatoes and your peppers separate and keep those away from potatoes. When you're growing things like salads, we know that they're quite a shallow rooted crop. So we can benefit by interplanting things that use below the ground. So things like carrots or parsnips, but again, not both together one or the other because they grow downwards whereas salads grow on the surface so you could also plant things like beetroot because they become bulbs that sit on the surface of your compost but they don't take up a lot of space as well so you can plant things like turnips because turnips naturally deter aphids as well and also things like mint again in pots things like sage as well strong herbs will deter quite a few pests. The marigolds once again distracting slugs and snails away from your tender greens which is obviously going to be a benefit. We also get things like as peas and as beans which grow quite tall. So if you've got plants like salads and spinach especially then they're really good to grow at the base of things like peas and beans because they give them some shelter and we all know that spinach bolts very quickly. It gets too much sun and it gets too hot. So using peas and beans as a natural shade is perfect. While at the same time, peas and beans expel nitrogen into the soil. So then other vegetables that's growing in the same area as that plant can then absorb that nitrogen and help them grow even better. We also like to grow cucumbers. Because again, they're quite easy to grow, but they do become very big plants very soon. And apart from things like powdery mildew, which we'll cover in a later video, they have other problems with cucumber beetle. But if you plant nasturtiums at the base of your cucumbers, they will deter that beetle. But at the same time, that plant will also attract spiders and ground beetles, which feed on the cucumber beetle. So it's one way of keeping that plant safe. But again, when you're growing things below these cucumber plants, don't plant herbs below that plant. They don't like herbs at all. Also, keep those away from potatoes. And then when it actually comes to growing your potatoes, we all have us ups and downs every single year with potatoes. But once again, there are certain things we can interplant with potatoes to give them best chance. 
and one of those just happens to be the quickest and easiest vegetable you can grow, which is radish. And radish, as previously mentioned, provides a bit of ground cover to help with weeds. But at the same time, growing potatoes and radish together helps potatoes become more disease resistant. So obviously that is going to be of benefit to us when we're growing as potatoes, which once again are a long season crop. So to some degree, we can avoid any disappointment by helping as much as we can. But again, you can't grow potatoes, no cucumbers or tomatoes. Avoid anything that's in the nightshade family because that is going to be detrimental to your plants. Mixing plants like that together can trigger things like early blight or late blight. If one plant's susceptible to a disease that another plant is, as far as I'm concerned, you've got twice the chance of that disease taking hold. That's why we try and avoid growing certain plants together. We've already mentioned growing peas and beans. And we've mentioned the fact that peas and beans grow quite tall. So they provide natural shading for other low level plants. And they expel nitrogen into your soil, which acts as a natural fertilizer. But again, if you plant basil at the base of your peas, that's gonna deter pests. But don't plant any onions, garlic, or leeks at the base of peas or beans because they'll stunt the growth of your peas or beans. So keep those completely separate. And just one more thing that I wanted to mention were peppers. There's nothing more satisfying than growing really nice, big, sweet bell peppers or hot chilies, depending on what your preference is. But again, they are very susceptible to things like aphids which can be a nuisance for quite a lot of plants. But once again, the low level growing plants, so you can have low level plants growing around those as well, which will help with some of your problems. Things like onions and garlic growing around your peppers will deter aphids. Peppers and cucumbers can grow quite happily together as well, as will carrots. And again, marigolds and herbs you can also plant around that area. So that's just a few things that I thought I'd mention. There's lots and lots more things that you can actually do to help you get better harvests. But if we start off with those ones, which I think are probably the most common of plants that people try and grow, at least we've got somewhere to start from. And if we adapt all those ideas into our own, own growing, then hopefully we'll get an even better harvest by the end of 2023. And if interested in seeing other subjects we'll be covering over the next few months, please hit that subscribe button and press that notifications bell. And we'll see you at next upload.